and cover goals nationwide. In 2014, drawing on her teaching background and her strong belief in the power of education, she co-founded Wolfways, a wolf education program for pre-K through eighth grade. It is her belief that planting today's seeds will bring hope to the wolves' future. Sheila has been advocating for wolves for over 40 years. For the past four years, she has been working with Jody Feldman as an educator for Wolfways, focusing on science-based education about wolves. She believes that the future of wolves depends on dispelling myths and misinformation, that teaching the next generation the truth about wolves is their hope for the future. Please welcome Jody and Sheila. Well, good afternoon. I'm Sheila Redman. And I'm Jody Belton. And whoops, most important, this is Journey. <laughs> He's the real star of the show. Yeah. Anyway. So, yeah, we are with the Protocol Wolf Ways. And um, we were just asked today to share with you who Wolf Ways is and some of the things that we do. And, and this is basically the main reason why we do what we do. Okay. Anyway, so this is my fifth speak for worlds. And every time I come to one of these conferences, I hear the same questions like, well, what can I do? You know, what can I do? And I ask myself the same thing. You know, I've signed petitions, and I've made phone calls, and I've written letters, and I've visited with my legislators, and all of these things, but I've never really felt that I've been heard over the voices of those who just want to have the wolves gone for whatever reason. So, when the Oregon Department of Fish and Wildlife was due to revise their wolf plan, was that four years ago, 2015? I joined up with Oregon Wild, you know, to um, help, you know, get keep keep the wolves protected. And Joni was a volunteer too, and so we were we were wild ones. That's Oregon Wild's uh, grassroots wolf advocates. And so we went to the lobby days and stuff like that. But I still was like, well, what can I do? What can I do? It's not working. And then Joni showed me or gave me a chance to do something more. You know, that's something more that I was looking for that could help me to make a difference for the future for the wolves. So wolf advocacy, as I think we all know, can be extremely disheartening. Uh, heartbreaking over and over and over. <coughs> I was looking for a balance to that. And as an ex-teacher and kind of a forever educator, I, um, I just really felt that the hope for the future for our wolves lies in the education of the next generation. And um, I just really believe that with understanding, our next generation can learn to love and care and want to protect our wolves. So in the year 2012, I was fortunate to meet a woman, her name was Jamie Birch. And Jamie Birch was a volunteer with uh, Wolf Haven uh, International at the Tenaya. And um, she, she told me that Wolf Haven was interested in having some education down in this area. And I was like, yes, I was excited. This is, this is what I'm looking for. This is what I really want to do. And so a year later, um, she and I, we met together with Diane Gahey. I'm sorry, I can't pronounce her last name, Gahey's. <laughs> and Diane, the director was Diane back there of Wolf Haven, along with some of her staff. And we also met with Rob Clavins at Oregon Wild. And together, they agreed to sponsor a new wolf education program. And so Wolf Ways was born. And this is 
is Jamie on the right. And it's been quite the adventurous whirlwind ever since for us. Um, so, um, sorry, <laughs> got it off the here. Um, so, we, uh, because we believe that we want all kids, regardless of their financial abilities, and schools, regardless of financial abilities, to be able to have this kind of information and learn about roles, we present our programs totally free. Um, we work with pre-K through eighth grade primarily. We do do some adult programs as well, but we specialize working with kids. And um, we are now a pack of six uh, volunteers, and we're all volunteers, and that includes Marianne Erickson right here. Raise your hand, Marianne. <laughs> and Marianne is our pre-K kindergarten whisperer. <laughs> And, um, and we have now served, we have reached over 7,000 kids since we began. You know, well beyond what I ever dreamed when we started this. And that does not include at least 3,000 people in tabling events, which are all ages. And um, so, so in the year 2017, um, we were invited to all third grade classes, eight of them, in Washougal, Washington. And uh, they invited a, um, a reporter from their local newspaper who wrote up just a really nice review for us. And so one of the teachers put together a photo album. I just want to share that album with you. Um, so these are some of the highlights that she, that she felt was for the, from the program for her kids. On the upper left there, we teach the kids that there's one really big reason why wolves need to take two years to become an adult and to learn the skills of hunting. And there's the big reason right there. We have a full-size bull elk made out of cloth. Kids love to compare themselves to it. We put Journey in front of that elk, and boy, it's really apparent to why they need the pack to bring down these animals and why the hunt is so dangerous and so difficult. We try to be interactive. We have some games. At the bottom there is we have this game that compares wolf and human families. How are we different? How are we similar? Um, we always uh, teach about the wolves in their state. And the kids love to check out the skull and the fur. And thanks to the publisher of this book, Journey, which is written by uh, Becky Elgin down in Ashland, uh, we are able to um, give that book to every school library. And it's really fun because once the kids realize the book's in their library, they start buying for who's going to be able to take it out first. <laughs> so it's pretty cool. So one reason we get invited into classrooms is we do help to meet some of the teachers' science standards, as well as a lot of their curricular goals. OK, and one of our main goals, of course, is dispelling some of the myths and misconceptions about wolves, starting with, of course, the big bad wolf. And even children as young as 40 years old already believe that wolves are mean, vicious animals. And it's not surprising because even more recent films like Frozen and Beauty and the Beast and even Mary Poppins helped to perpetuate that myth. And so one of our, the cores of our program is to Let people know that a wolf pack is a family. We share true stories about wolves that show how um, amazingly good at relationships and caring for each other these wolves are. And this is the heart of the program because it's important to reach these kids here in the heart because that's when they'll begin to care. Good. And one of the, the, in the second grade on, we start talking about wolves in the ecosystem. 
And one of the things that we use is this cool ball game. We try to make things as interactive as possible. So you guys game for this? <laughs> <laughs> so, just an example. Um, so what we have here, what happens with the ball? You bring out the ball with the kids are with you, okay? <laughs> and they have 1 to 12 on the ball, there's 1 to 12 up there. And so, these are all animals, plants, whatever, who were helped by the return of wolves. How many of you know, the, are familiar with the story of what happened when the wolves returned to Yellowstone? Hands up? Okay, yeah. All right, well, a lesson goes before this game. <laughs> But, um, so what we do is to kind of reinforce that, a little problem solving. We tell the kids that, you know, find your, you know, show us your right thumb, and we're going to throw the ball to you, and whatever number is close to your right thumb, find that number up here, and then tell us how whatever it is um, help, was helped by the return of wolves. Okay? And so we also tell them, play it like the wolves would play. Okay, teamwork, cooperation, if you're a little stuff, you got your pack here to help them. All right? So, do I have anybody who's game to try this, just as an example? Come on back here. Okay. All right. Carla, here we go. What right. number? So, uh, where my thumb is? Your right thumb. My right thumb is closest to four. Four, okay. Oh, okay. The beaver. How did wolves help the beaver? <laughs> what, what, do beavers, what do beavers eat? Then you got your pack. What, what do beavers eat? Oh, well, okay, pack. <laughs> when they're not OR stands for what? Oregon. 
And the seven means that he was the seventh wolf in Oregon to receive a collar. So he decided that he would take off and he wandered around and wandered around, wandered around for three years, over 3,000 miles. This little wolf went all the way down into California looking for a mate, came back up again. He became famous because of his journey. Because remember, we knew where he was. So they had a contest to name him. And a girl in California won the contest and gave him the name of Journey because of his long journey, right? But he was still wandering around. And he was alone. He was famous, but he was alone. Do wolves like to be alone? <laughs> no. They're social animals like us. Imagine how lonely he must have been. You know, think about it. If you had to wander around for three years and never see another person, we wanted to tell him, Journey, there's no wolves down here. You're going to have to go back up where the wolves are if you want to find a mate. But then, all of a sudden, he kind of stopped wandering. And so the Fish and Wildlife Commission put up a trail camera, and they got this picture of Journey. And it looks like he's just had one of those 20-pound meals we were talking about. <laughs> and then, about an hour later, on the same path, they got this picture. Is this Journey? No. no. This is a beautiful black female wolf. So what do you suppose happened? Journey finally found love. <laughs> and the following spring, they had these three beautiful little pups. And then the next year, this little gray pup also dispersed when he was two, I guess two years later, and he went down to California, and now Journey is a grandpa. <laughs> Yay, Journey. And so, now, I think this picture was taken a year or so ago, and this is Journey, and he's 10 years old now, and this is really, really old for a wolf in the wild, and he's still bringing home the groceries to feed his family. Yay, Journey. Yay. <laughs> So we do, we, we stay apolitical with our programs. However, we have given the opportunity for kids to be able to do something to help protect the wolves. And the prime example was in the year 2015, when ODFW decided that they were deciding whether to um, delist, state to list our wolves, are all of our 88 wolves that we have in our state. And the mission of ODFW states that it's here for, you know, they want to protect animals for present and future generations. Well, what's the best way to, to know what those future generations want than to hear from the future generations? And so we, separate from our program, we offered uh, the teachers an opportunity for their students, and we call it the Kids Hall Campaign, and it was a letter writing campaign. And six teachers jumped on the opportunity for their kids to be able to do something real and meaningful. And um, so I had the privilege at the band hearing to present 100 letters to the commissioners from kids. And just a little sampling of those letters. Um, this is a seven-year-old. She wrote three. She wrote a three-page letter, and explaining the importance of wolves and da da da, all this great stuff. And she ends it saying, "I know wolves should be protected, and I know it's my job to fight an injustice." Mm -hmm. Pretty impressive, huh? <laughs> um, another one saying, "I want to see wolves thriving when I'm in my 90s." <laughs> That's looking ahead, and I know none of the short-sightedness that we make so many decisions on. Uh, so can, can you please help protect wolves? And then this one was offering a solution to the problem. Um, and then three or four 
four years ago, we, uh, two sixth grade classes that we presented to, they, their teacher wanted them to get more involved. And so they went down to Salem. And under the guidance of Steph Taylor over there, I'm giving you credit. <laughs> um, they met with their legislators. It was part of Oregon Wild's uh, Wildlife Lobby Day. And they met with their legislators to speak for wolves. And um, I met one of those young ladies a couple years after that. And she told me how much it impacted her that she still wore her Lobby Day t-shirt. So. And posters made by pre-K kids. So of course, not everybody can go around to schools during the week and you know other places in the community to do presentations for classrooms. But tabling, community tabling, is something that most people can do at some point. And we have done a lot of tabling too. And one of the advantages of tabling is that you reach a wide variety of people. You're not just preaching to the choir. And we have people, you know, age three to 99 come into these tables. And we generally table at the zoo, you know, like maybe twice a month. And different events, you know, like Earth Day or the Water Festival, uh, Halloween, the Halloween at the zoo, just different events where we have our table and our information and stuff. And even if people don't you know, kind of get converted, they do learn something about wolves. Everybody learns something, which is really important, and it's what we're trying to do, and it can light the spark. And we've actually gotten teachers and, and students so that we've been able to connect with schools because of the tabling. And we focus on Oregon wolves, in Oregon, of course, and we have all kinds of hands-on experiences for the kids, and like we have over here, the skull and the paw print and the fur, and interactive games like the Smith test. Can you find your prey with your nose? They have to match up the scents. And crafts. We have wolf ears that they can color, masks, and pants that they can decorate. So it's kind of a, 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 as interactive as we can make it for the kids. And one of the third grade teachers gave her kids an assignment before the presentation, asking them to list the words you know, that they could think of, all the words they could think of to describe a wolf, from books that, books that they've read and movies that they've seen. And this is what they came up with. And then, after our presentation, she had them do it again. And this is what they said. So. So, yeah, we like to think we're making some difference. Um, the really, really rewarding thing for us and anybody who gives presentations are thank you cards that you get. I have a pretty good stack of them and a few samples here. Um, I like wolves a lot better now because of your presentation. Um, I thought wolves were mean, but learning more about wolves now, now I know that they're not mean and vicious. I learned that wolves aren't mean at all. Um, you really changed my opinion, and your presentation taught me that all life matters. And so, um, I'm trying to think where we're at. Oops, okay. <laughs> Um, so yeah, we've been pretty busy planting seeds. And of course we never know whether they know exactly how big whatever that seed grew or whatever, but we keep planting them and we do feel like um, we have, yeah, we've, we've, we've learned that attitudes can change and, and then they have changed. And kids have learned how to how to care for the wolves, and it's just super important because the wolves' future lies in their hands. So at the end of our program, we let them know that they all can help wolves today in a way that's really, really important, which is spreading the word, sharing with their friends and their families what they have learned about wolves. And because that's the way to debunk those myths and the misinformation that's out there and to continue learning about wolves and to believe 
believe that together they can make a difference for things that they really, really believe in and care about. So I want to finish this with a message from an extremely wise five-year-old. And this is a message that he sent to ODFW. We can't just give up and not take care of the wolves. You can't just go home and you take care of them and give up. We should not give up on them. Maybe we can take care of them by helping them be safe. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 